running, who wants to run if they can ride a bike? I mean, the choice seems obvious. Or is it? Is cycling actually better than running? Dillman Coaching YouTube channel. I am Drew Dillman and I've been racing bikes for over a decade at an elite level, mostly cyclocross, mountain bike, and this year mixing things up on the road. This YouTube channel is all about providing fun educational videos on cycling topics like today's topic of running versus cycling and let's just be honest, I'm ripping off Dylan Johnson's channel. It's, it's out there. But we're buddies and he said that's cool. In fact, he's helping me promote this channel. And so if you've come over from his YouTube channel, I thank you for being here. And hopefully I can make myself a little different from his. Um, and maybe one day I'll be better than him. You know, let's just go there. Today we're talking about running versus cycling. We're gonna weigh the pros and the cons of both of those. And then we'll determine a winner at the end. Which one really is better, running or cycling? So let's not waste any time. Let's dive right in. All right, let's talk about the positives of cycling. The number one positive for cycling is that it's fun. Most people who get hooked on bikes get hooked because of how much fun it is. And I don't know about you, but sending it down a rocky section of trail or climbing mountains of a backcountry gravel road, it doesn't get much more exhilarating than that. The second best thing about cycling is that it's scenic. You can just cover so much more ground when you're cycling than when you're on a bike. Let's just talk about one hour. In one hour, you could go 10 to 20 to even 25 miles if you're moving, and you can just cover so much more scenic area. You don't ever have to backtrack on yourself. In fact, one summer, I got to take my bike with me to Ecuador for six weeks, and it was one of the best experiences of my life because I got to see parts of Ecuador that nobody else, none of my other friends got to see because I had my bike with me and I could go out for a couple hours. And I got to just see all of the scenic stuff there is to see in Ecuador, and it was great. There's actually an equation behind this. Oh yes, the equation for scenery. More trees past equals more scenic. And on one bike ride, you could pass thousands of trees. That is a scenic ride. The third best thing about cycling is the gear. Custom jerseys, custom bikes, literally a thousand pair of socks, aero helmets, aero wheels, electronic shifting, hydraulic brakes, the list goes on and on and on. I mean, if your garage isn't literally filled with thousands of bikes that cost more than the house itself, you're not doing it right. The fourth positive for cycling is the racing. From one hour criteriums, to 12 hour gravel races and everything in between, the opportunities to race your bike are endless. You wanna race your bike for 20 seconds? There's a race for that. You wanna pedal really slow for 12 hours? There's a race for that. You wanna soar through the air and do flips? There's a race for that. And if you don't believe me, just watch that awesome movie Rad that was back in the 1980s. <laughs> The fifth positive for cycling is that it's a lifelong hobby. I mean, you could basically ride your bike to the grave if you wanted to. It's so easy on our bodies that even old farts can do it. Unlike other sports that are really high impact, cycling is low impact, meaning you can do it for your whole life. Unlike all those other sports, which eventually you have to quit doing because your body just can't take the beating anymore. All right, let's look at some of the negatives of cycling. The number one negative of cycling is that it's expensive. Cycling requires a ton of gear, and that gear costs a lot of money. If you're doing it right, your bike probably costs more than your car, and you could probably pay off your house mortgage with all of the money that you end up spending. The second negative of cycling is that it takes longer. Not only does it drain your wallet, but it also drains your time. Usually a typical bike workout lasts at least 90 minutes, and that's not including the at least 15 minutes that it takes to get ready. So you're looking at at least two hours for your ride every single day. 
And this doesn't even include your endurance rides, which means you could be on your bike literally all day. The third negative to cycling is that it requires skill. It's not as easy as going out and buying all this gear and then jumping on your bike and going for a ride. There's actually a lot of skill involved in maneuvering a bicycle. I mean, there's a lot more things happening and you're going at a higher speed, so that just means so much more to think about. Pedaling, steering, shifting, braking, dodging pedestrians, dodging cars, getting chased after dogs, bunny hopping curbs, etc., etc. All right, now let's jump over to running. The number one positive for running is that it's less expensive. All you need is a pair of shoes. And even if you get the nicest pair of shoes on the market, it's still gonna be thousands less than the nicest bike on the market. And let's just say you go all in for running and you get all the gear, you're probably only looking at about a thousand bucks. But if you go all in for cycling, you're looking at a price tag of at least $10,000. The second best thing about running is that it's more intense, which means you get more bang for your buck. Usually when I go to a restaurant, I'll do this with the items on the menu. I try to calculate how many calories per dollar are in each item. For running, there's calories per minute, and the calories per minute for running are higher than that of cycling. This study here shows that even when riding and running at comparable intensities, running time was 10% shorter than cycling. The third best thing about running is the community. I mean, let's be honest, the cycling community is pretty small. But on the flip side of this, if you go to the park on a Saturday morning, you'll run, literally, into hundreds of other people out for their morning jog. And this just creates so much more opportunity for friendship. All right, now let's talk about some of the negatives of running. The number one negative for running is that it's harder. Most people don't enjoy running. Running is just something they have to do to stay healthy. I mean, let's be honest, you only really feel good for the first two minutes of a run. After that, your heart rate's pretty jacked, your lungs are burning, your legs are burning, there's sweat in your eyes, and you're barely even moving. And then on top of all that, when you get home, you've gotta deal with the blisters. This study shows four charts that show VO2 while runners and cyclists are operating at the same intensity. You'll notice that the runners are always consuming more oxygen, no matter what the intensity. So if you're crunched on time, then this could be a good thing because you could get a harder workout in less time. However, if you're trying to improve endurance and go for longer workouts, then this wouldn't be a good, good thing because running is going to wear you out quicker than cycling. The second biggest negative for running is that it's less scenic. If you start from your front door every single time you go out for a run, the options for routes are going to be pretty limited. You're probably going to be running on the same roads in the same towns every time you go out for a run. And this will get boring because there's just not going to be that much opportunity to spice things up. And if we go back to our equation of trees past equals scenic, you're only going to pass a few hundred trees while on a run, which means scientifically it's going to be a less scenic exercise. And the third biggest negative about running is gravity. Let's just be honest, if you've got a few extra pounds around your midsection, gravity doesn't give a rip. And running doesn't give a rip. And running is gonna be a whole lot less pleasant because of those few extra pounds. All right, we've talked about the pros and cons of running and cycling, but there's something else we have to talk about. Both of these sports depends on the individual. If you're old and you've had a couple hip and knee replacements, then running is probably totally out of the picture and cycling is your only option. However, if physically you can manage cycling or running, then which one is the better option? And to figure this out, we've got to talk about high impact sports versus low impact sports. Low impact sports include things like cycling that don't involve hitting or pounding of the joints on the ground. High impact sports like running include a constant pounding and hitting of the ground as you do the sport. Both of these have positives and negatives, and here are a few of the big ones. While high impact sports seem negative at first glance, they're actually quite important when it comes to healthy, strong bone development. This study on exercise and bone mineral density concluded that strength training and high impact endurance training increase bone density. And that's not all. It seems that there are some other important physiological improvements that come along with improved bone density. This study on the bone density within different types of sports shows that strength, muscle mass, 
and maximal oxygen uptake correlate with bone density. On the flip side, you could quickly jump to the conclusion that cycling leads to weak bones. However, this might be too big of a jump. This same study ended up concluding that all exercise is beneficial for bone density, but high impact is just more better. However, I did come across this study on regional bone density in runners and cyclists, and the results were pretty scary. This chart on bone mineral density in the spine shows that cyclists actually have the lowest results, while those who run and bike have the highest. And even more surprising was that this was also true in the legs. Cycling has the lowest bone mineral density, even lower than the control group, while those who both run and ride had the highest. And while later in the study they do admit that when weight is considered, cycling and the control become pretty much identical, they still conclude that cyclists should take caution if they aren't doing any other weight-bearing exercises. As a side note, I came across a lot of information on teenagers and young people whose bodies are still developing. For them, high-impact sports and the increased bone density that come along with those sports could be very beneficial for them for their lifetime. Basically, if you run when you're young, and your body is still in that developmental state, you're creating a foundation of strong bones. Now it's story time. When I was 18, the Cyclocross World Championships were being held at Coxide, Belgium. This course is one of the most iconic courses in cyclocross history because of its large sand sections. Eventually, every single racer ends up flipping over the handlebars and half of the course is, is spent on your feet running. With this in mind, I spent a significant portion of my training that season working on my running development. There were a lot of 5.30 a.m. mornings so where I could run to my local high school track and do some bleachers before the bus picked me up at 6.30. And all of this hard work did pay off. I ended up finishing 13th place that year, and just to give you a frame of reference, Matthew Vanderpoel was first and Woot Van Aert was second. It was a stacked field to say the least. And ever since then, I've just kept running a part of my typical cycling training. I remember even getting to college and some of my cycling teammates giving me a hard time because they thought running was actually bad for cycling. But I didn't let it bother me because I thought the results spoke for themselves. And I don't wanna to go too far on a limb here, but I've been running for a long time now, and in all my years of racing, I've only broken one bone. And even to break that bone, it took me going about 25 miles per hour right into a metal barrier, and I only broke one little bone in my hand. All right, that's enough with all the details. Let's get to a winner. And this isn't Little League Soccer where everybody gets a trophy and everybody's a winner. There has to be a winner. Winning feels good. I really like winning. Are you ready for this? And that winner is running. From a practical standpoint, running is just better. I mean, if you just take two random people off the street, they're gonna be a lot more successful with running. But if you're talking to somebody who has countless hours to waste, thousands of dollars to blow, and no friends to spend time with, then maybe cycling is the right option. It's when you talk to cyclists versus runners when things get interesting. Most runners hate running. Brendan Leonard, a runner, most famously known for his funny Instagram posts, came out with a book titled, I Hate Running and You Can Too. However, if you talk to a cyclist, most of the time they're completely stoked on it and they can't get enough. And I think that speaks for itself. All right, that's it for this video. And if you liked it, be sure to tell every single one of your friends to go and watch it immediately. And then after that, you should probably host a screening of it at your house. And then after that, you should probably scream it from the rooftops of how good Dillman Coaching is. Uh, but before you do all of that, just press that subscribe button. And until next time, stay rad.